All right, here we are. Battle Creek National Hare Scramble 2019. My first Hare Scramble of 2019, so we'll see how this goes. And surprisingly, not off to too bad of a start today. So definitely take this. We had just over 20 riders, 20, somewhere between 20 and 25. I don't didn't do an exact count, just kind of guessing by the, the way the line looked there. Getting a little squirrely in the sand there and roosted me a bit. And I bump his back tire and I'm like, oh man, we are hair scramble racing. I forgot how how crazy and exciting and adrenaline packed these first first few minutes of the, the laps can be with everybody all bunched up. I, I haven't been completely off the bike this year. I've been doing some sprint enduros and some family enduros with my son, but this is uh, my first hair scramble and it's completely different style than, than those other two races. So wasn't quite sure my body would be ready for this two hour plus one lap race today. So ended up uh, getting three laps in I think I was seventh after lap one, and uh, I think after lap two I was eighth, and then I really started to break down physically. I was cramping up, calves were cramping, my hands were cramping, and uh, I did. I finished out the third lap, and then I I decided it'd probably be best for me to, to pull off. Didn't, didn't want to risk an injury there just because I was. So fatigued, I was just missing my marks. It was hot today. Being this the first race of this style I've done this year, just my I just wasn't ready for it physically. So overall, a great day though, fun day, great track. Really, really enjoyed it. Not much of a motocross guy, as you can tell, obviously, but um, you know, the trails were good, the track was good. They were constantly out here watering, trying to keep the dust down the best they could. And uh, as usual, Battle Creek puts on a great event each and every time. Not quite sure who I'm following here. I'm not not accustomed to uh, a lot of the riders in this series since this is my first event of the year. Everybody's got different riding gear, different bikes, whatnot. So, um, know, know a couple of them out here I can recognize, but I'm not, not quite sure who I'm following here at this point. course today itself was right at eight miles I believe so uh, we ran the entire motocross track and then probably I'm guessing that's probably a mile or maybe a little more and then we had seven miles of mostly uh, mostly pretty open trails we had a little bit of it was some, some single track and started getting pretty rutted out there towards the, the latter half of this race but um, had an enduro cross section, which you're going to see here shortly, I think. Um, consisted of uh, some tires, a tire, like a tire jump, and then uh, some big tractor tires laid on their side. And then they actually added some telephone poles this year, which I wasn't quite ready for. <laughs> and uh, probably did, didn't handle the best on this first lap anyway, so I'll let you let you see that when it comes up here.
so I had a pretty busy morning. I had I had two daughters that raced in the 50 auto class, and so I was busy getting them ready and then helping them throughout their race. And then right after that, I had, I've got a son that raced in the, the 65 class in the, the morning session, the minis, and uh, so I was out trying to watch him and see how he was doing. So didn't have a lot of time to uh, kind of prepare mentally for this race, which I think was, was better when it comes down to it. I didn't have a chance to think about it and get any nerves or anything. I mean, I was pretty pretty calm sitting in the line there and uh, probably should have put a little more a little thought into pacing myself because midway through this lap, I kind of realized I was pushing too hard and it was really going through a lot of energy and that was not drinking water like I should have been and but you know late second lap you know we're only 16 miles in at that point maybe maybe about an hour and 10 hour and 15 minutes in and I was I was cramping already and I fought my way through the third lap and I thought that's enough for me <laughs> live to see another day but um you know, my, my son, he, he rode great. We, we put a lot of work in uh, the day before here at the track, kind of practicing the moto. And you know, they had an open ride from 11 to 5 the Saturday before. So we were out here, and he rode all day long and really really got a lot more comfortable in the motocross section of it. And um, he came away top in the district. So beat all the other D14 riders in his class and then he came away fifth overall in his class only only uh, behind some really fast guys out of New Jersey, Maryland and Pennsylvania who had made quite a trip to get to this event so super proud of him just the work that he's been doing this year putting in the effort Braden's been doing doing great great job riding every chance he can get and, and just really studying the sport trying to trying to improve his his skills and he's starting to all come together for him. I'm really happy for him. I've actually been posting his hair scramble videos to the channel this year because I I just haven't had the time or the the energy or the want to to ride in these events I guess this year. So um, but uh, wasn't gonna miss this one. I love love coming to Battle Creek. So and here we're coming up on the Enduro section here, and you're gonna see some fail failure here. I'll just let you sit back and watch. So I stall the bike once, and I'm coming up on the tires here, and my tire just lands smack in there. And I stall the bike again coming up on the telephone poles and I just plant right into the front of that. Didn't have enough, enough momentum there. Trying to work it up over that pole, be on my way. And uh, there's actually a bit of a uh, crash here. This little jump here. I knew this was going to be treacherous. They had this in the sprint enduro, I think, too, if I remember correctly. And either going to take it slow or really fast or that's going to happen right there. Glad, glad he hopped up and wasn't injured from that. So now we're getting into some of the single track, off the moto, past the enduro, just some nice, nice trails here at this point. First lap, they were in great shape. As they as they tend to do, they, they tend tend to get rutted out and looped out here later in the race. But this this first lap was was pretty awesome. Wanted to send out some well wishes to Steve Broussard. I I had parked next to him this week and was chatting before and after the race and uh, when I when I pulled off at, when I was done riding here he would he was already sitting there and underneath the the tent in a lawn chair watching guys go and um, went up and asked him what was going on I guess he lap one early on he 
kind of overshot a double, I think, and thinks, thinks he may have broke his wrist. So hope that's not what it is. I hope it's a sprain and you're able to, to get back out here as soon as possible. It's, not, it's always nice having you out here on the track. Then later on, shortly, I mean, this was probably late second lap, I would say. My GoPro had just actually died, lost battery power. Uh, one of the A riders came through. Just, I had pulled off because there's a, a couple of them coming together. So I pulled off and watched them go by. The last one in the group, I don't know if he clipped a tree root or what, kind of threw him off. And he just shot head first into about a 16 inch diameter tree. And uh, I mean, he was. He was moving at a pretty good clip, probably 20, 25 through the woods, and pops right back up. Says, I'm I'm good. Takes off again. I mean, it was the most bizarre, most incredible thing I've probably seen out here while I was hair scramble race. And I thought for sure he's gonna gonna be down with broken arm, broken neck, broken collarbone, something. And he just popped right back up and on his way. So the first two laps, I didn't take any of the bypasses. Um, you know, there wasn't anything too treacherous here. I, I felt that I could I could handle everything there. So, um, and then on the third lap, you know, cramping up and everything, I just basically wanted to take it easy that lap, get that lap in, um, and see how I felt at the end of that lap to see if I wanted to continue on. And uh, so I, I did the bypass on the enduro section my god that was a long bypass i i was told it was considerably longer than than going through all that but you know i i still think it was probably ultimately the right decision because if i were to get stuck on those telephone poles again or those tires or anything i mean i just i would have it would have made the cramping so much worse so much earlier on in that lap and the bypass was easy riding so that's the way I went. Can't wait to see some of the pictures from this race going through that enduro cross section. I think it's going to be a comedy of errors for a lot of people. I think every time I went through there, there was somebody with a bike on its side or a bike they were trying to push across. And, um, I definitely saw saw a photographer there at least one lap, if not two laps. So there should be several pictures from that section to look at. Looking forward to that later tonight. I think this guy, he wanted me to go around him, but he wasn't really holding me up, so I did. I did it again, I'm like, well, all right, I'll go around you, I guess. He, he wasn't holding me up, I was just happy following him at that at that point. I was, at this point, I was starting to realize I was fatiguing pretty pretty rapidly, and it's like, ah, better just slow down, I'll, I'll follow behind him for a while, and then uh, I wasn't expecting him to pull off that second time, and I followed the same line again, but, 
no big deal. He got out of the way. I didn't even really need him to, so. I like this, this section here. A lot of ups and downs. A little bit of elevation change. I enjoy that. Where I'm at in Indiana, it's pretty flat, so. This video is actually my entire first lap, um, you know, plus a little bit. We did we did go through the scoring loop on the first time through. We bypassed that, but you know, we were only out there a half mile or less probably by the time we had, we had come to that. Um, so this is probably a little bit more than one full lap, but gives you guys a good idea of, of the, the course that we had today. Here's the log bridge. Um, a little bit wider than in years past from what I've heard. heard. Um, the first time I rode here was 2018 last year and it, I think it was the same as that but I've heard stories from years prior where it was only like two or three logs wide and people shooting off the edge of that so it's wide enough now I don't you know I feel very comfortable going across it and if it were raining or something, I may take the bypass just because those logs can get slippery. But today, no issues at all there. coming up on me and I figured that's a decent spot to pull over, get out of his way, let him go. Try to be as cognizant of that as I can. You can usually hear the faster riders coming up behind you, you know, from a distance off and you can, they just got a different sound about them. You can just tell they're coming. So I always try to start looking for a good place to get off and give them plenty of room and let them be on their way. I'm not out here racing for for victories like some of these guys, so it doesn't bother me to, to move over. I know the first time I got lapped, the leader came through, and typically the leader will come through, and there's usually two or three more guys fairly close right behind there but it was several minutes uh, this time you know, the, the overall leader came through and I mean it was probably a good five minutes before the second place guy came through I mean he was just out to a huge lead and I I haven't talked to Talon but I might heard this from my son that Talon uh, had a tire come off the rim on his first lap and kind of put him behind I don't know what happened there if he got a flat or what happened but I can't confirm that story as that's from my my 11 year old son so it's hard telling <laughs> hard telling what what the real story is there That's a nice little little stall there going over that. Um, later in the race, I came through, I think it was lap lap two, one of those logs on that little little bridge there to get over the, the giant log was actually missing. It had busted off. I don't know if somebody hit it too hard and uh, it broke that. So from that point forward, I wasn't about to try to navigate that with just one of the pieces going up over the foot ramp so I 
I did the di diversion route after that point. Try to stay with those guys as long as I can to kind of push myself and keep my keep my tempo, my pace up when when I let somebody around like that. But uh, as you can see, he's slowly just kind of pulling away from me here. So did the right thing by letting him by. He's definitely faster than me. I probably wasn't holding him up much, but over a course of a couple miles, makes up a lot of time. did have a couple of crashes in this race, nothing major. Um, my knee's a little swollen up. I must have hit it on a rock. I, I had hit a root. I don't know if it's on, on this first lap or not. It may have been on the second lap, but I was going through a corner and hit one of those tree roots, kind of bounced my front tire out, and then it landed in the sand and slid out. And when I laid it down, my knee landed right on some rocks and uh, cut me cut me pretty good through my riding pants and, and it's swollen up I'm starting to get pretty sore at this point I'm recording recording this video about about 8 30 on uh, the night of the race so um, not real sore other than the knee at this point and then I've got a nice gash on my shin too and I couldn't tell you what that's from I must have hit hit a tree branch or, or something but I, I don't recall that happening while I was out on the track so and then the uh, third lap I was just just about coming up to uh, I was on the motocross track and I, I was through one of the faster sections and uh, kind of went up over a little a little jump there at, a, at an angle and when that came down bike washed out on me and rolled a little bit on that one and my my head and my visor on my my helmet kind of dug into the dirt so got a nice face full of sand on that one but it didn't hurt it was just it was nice and soft anyway so just kind of barrel rolled barrel rolled through it I guess and at that point I thought as I'm spitting out the sand I thought I think this is going to be my last lap I was just getting to the point where I was I was missing my marks where I wanted to be going through turns and um, having trouble having trouble standing up anymore because I was just my legs were tired they were cramping my calves my, my quads my hands and I at once once I went down there right before the end of my third lap I had pretty much told myself this is gonna be my last lap I'd rather quit a little bit early and not hurt myself than and have something where I'm not able to race the rest of the season because I injured myself because I was too tired to be out there. So no regrets. Um, I was a little, a little disappointed when I pulled off. Um, you always want to make, make a complete race, but at this point, looking back on it, I have no regrets. I feel like I probably made the right choice, and I, I feel pretty good right now physically, other than my knee. And if I, I think if I would have done a fourth lap. I'd probably be regretting it pretty good right now. So 
I felt like most of this track flowed really well. And for one reason or another, towards the end of this wood section, every lap I felt like it's kind of tedious back and forth, back and forth, and I just couldn't really get in a good rhythm. And uh, couldn't get in a flow to, to, I didn't feel like I was moving very fast through it for, some, for one reason or another. And maybe it was just me, I don't know if anybody else felt like that, but 90% of the course, 85% of the course, I felt like I had great flow, great great trails, but there was that one section toward the, towards the end of the woods on in each lap where I'm just like, is it ever gonna kind of open up? And I think I'm either in that section now or approaching it here, so. Yeah, it's a dumb mistake there. I was following the guy in front of me, and uh, he had overshot the turn, and I wasn't really paying attention, so I just followed behind him and did the same thing. So we had to bust through some brush there, get back on the track, and there was there was a guy behind me, and I know he did the exact same thing too. He followed right behind me, so comedy of errors on that little turn right there. exactly sure how long the AM section um, course was. I know we had eight miles. Um, if I had to guess, they were probably somewhere around four miles just from what their lap times were doing. My son he rides about the same pace I do and I think he had maybe four, maybe five laps. I think he, had, I think he finished with four laps in his hour race. So they were probably about half half the length as, as what we were. If I were to complete the race, I think I probably would have finished with four laps myself over a two hour period, where the AM session only rides for one hour. So I know they, they went across the log bridge. Um, they did not do of the enduro cross section they cut that out completely um, he said they didn't go over the big log with the little little jump over it they did they didn't do that section so i think i don't know if there's anything else they cut out but um, probably about half the length of ours overall So it's finally starting to open back up as we're coming back out, approaching the motocross course again here. And man, am I thankful for that. I was getting really, really tired of that 
tight back, back and forth. It's really wore me out. Plus moving at those slower speeds, not a lot of air going across you, so I was happy to get back out here where you can open it up a little bit. I don't like the motocross track. I've ridden here, I don't know, maybe a half dozen times, and I never rode a dirt bike in my life until last year. I bought a bike in January of 18 and picked up the sport at the age of 36. So, um, still pretty new to me, and I don't know that I'm ever going to be 100% comfortable on a motocross track just because I didn't do it at a young age. So. I basically picked up the sport so I could ride the, the family enduros with my son and, and it's a sport that I can do with, with my son and my daughters and we can all ride together and it's really really been a great family sport for us and um, you know I, I hope I can continue that for years to come as my son gets older and eventually we'll probably be riding on this big course with us and um, as my daughters move up I've got, they'll still be in the 50, 50 auto class for a couple more years, they're still pretty young, but, you know, eventually they'll, they'll be out here, hopefully ride along, they, they all seem to really love it at this point, hope it continues. So I knew this, this turn up here was really tight only because I rode the motocross track a few times yesterday and uh, we had our tent set up close to this turn and there were several people went down there in the morning session and my wife had, had told me that there were several people went down there in this session too early on because they weren't expecting that real tight downhill hairpin turn and they were just washing out or completely overshooting it and like almost hitting the fence. So um, definitely try to be careful out there, especially on your first lap when you're not familiar with the course. And I went down right about here, I'm thinking on lap three, it was real sandy and loose there. And I kind of came up over that little, that little uh, berm there and just washed out on me and I rolled in the sand. We're, we're getting pretty close to the end of this uh, this first lap here, so I just want to thank you guys for, for watching the video and uh, I mean, looked at the schedule to see what the next hair scramble is for sure. I know we're going to be up at uh, the Pinecone Family Enduro next weekend, Braden and I, and I think my dad, maybe my brother and his son are all going to be riding that, so it's a great event. If you guys just looked to ride some trails, you know, great trail system up there. Um, Lancy Motorcycle Club puts that on and they do a great job with it. So it's not competitive like this, um, but it's still a fun day of riding. So, and here we come, coming up into the scoring here. And this completes one lap around the Battle Creek Hair Scramble course here. So I'll see you guys next week for next, the next hair scramble. I plan to race that one too. So I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.